Coach Nate here answering the question, does running hurt your knees or do permanent damage to your knees? Let's go bomb this three mile hill and find out. And it's a ticket, talk a miser for the biggest, that's a comma and a comma and a comma, got to get it, get it. And it's a ticket, talk a miser for the biggest, that's a comma and a comma and a comma, got to get it. A comma and a comma and a comma, got to get it, get it, get it. Point number one, we have to address this very important fact that human beings respond positively to stress. All types of stress. In fact, without stress, we don't grow. We literally don't physiologically develop, we don't learn language, and we certainly don't run downhill without a little bit of work. But here's the deal. Runners and people who do regular weight-bearing activities, they've got higher bone density and they have stronger tendons and ligaments than those who don't. So while running can create problems, or some people who run will develop knee injuries, which I'll get to in a second, the very act and nature of running and other forms of physical training is actually good and necessary for us. We absolutely need to do it. We just need to figure out, hey, am I doing it wrong? And how do I do it better? And maybe am I running in the wrong shoes? Hey, before we continue bombing down the hill and test out our knees, if you are new here, we make videos so you can start running and they give you the know-how, the tips, the tricks, the resources, and motivation so you can stay running. So hit that subscribe button down there. Now, quick note, not all positive, not all stress is a good thing. You can overstress yourself. It happens all the time. When we stress ourselves more than we can adapt from it, we break down. But let's get that out of the way. Now, most runners, when we start working with them, or if they've started to deal with knee pain, we work with thousands of runners online all across the world through our YouTube channel and the Run Experience app where you can get great training. Find a link to it down below. They experience knee pain. The second question we always ask them is, hey, does running feel light or heavy to you? And uh, most of the time they say, hey, it feels kind of heavy. And we ask them to count their cadence. And most of the time, excuse me here, their cadence is pretty darn low. And what happens when your cadence is low is that with every footfall, more impact goes into that foot as opposed to being light and quick. But we have to deal with this very serious deal. Every time you run, you're launching yourself in the air, all your body weight lands on that one foot. Because you're moving forward and going fast, and because I'm going this downhill right here, I'm getting multiples of my 170 pound body landing on each one body part. But remember what I said in the first part, we are anti-fragile creatures. We are built for these types of impacts. We just have to positively expose ourselves to them. And if we do that, we actually get stronger. But what is really key is that we run the right way. Here's an example of slow heel striking, relaxing downhill. I can already feel the pressure in my knees when I do this, right? And here's the example of quicker, lighter feet, where as soon as that foot's on the ground, I'm immediately picking it back up again. And if I can continue to run like this, uphill, downhill, on the flat, it makes the biggest difference. So the best thing you can do is to run with the metronome. We'll link to one of our favorites. That's an app in the description of this video. And you can set it to numbers. Try to run above 85 steps per minute on one foot in the 85 to 90 range. There is no one magic number, but if you're low, you want to get it up. And in fact, we actually have a specific run cadence improvement program in the app. It's free. You can download it and start using it today. Point two, take a look at my shoes here. You think that going uphill or down these gnarly hills, I'd want the biggest, cushiest shoe possible. And that's where my friend, you're wrong. Bigger, cushier shoes, they actually do a better job of protecting our feet, but at the expense of our hips and knees taking a little bit more of a brunt because here's the deal. Your body's looking for some sense of stability and connection to the earth. And if I am further away from the earth with a higher stack height shoe and it's a spongier terrain, well, initially it feels good. Your feet are actually gonna be striking the ground harder to try to find that sense of stability. So in fact, when you run with really cushy shoes and you're someone who deals with knee issues, you're actually at risk of making it worse, not better. Conversely, by going to a lighter pair of shoes, low stack height, not a lot of cushion, the opposite happens. All of a sudden you're like, shit, I have to avoid that rock and that root. I have to more gingerly land. I have to pick up the slack in other parts of my body. I have to pick that foot up and easily go down. And just by improving your running form that way and being more thoughtful about it, you take so much pressure off of your knees and your hips when you run. Oh yeah, still going downhill, still feeling good here. Now, for some of you, you're gonna do these tips, but you're still gonna feel a little knee pain, and that's probably because you're already behind the eight ball, and we need to get you better. Now, the biggest misperception with pain, especially around joints like your knee, is that like, oh, if I feel pain in the joint, it must be because there's a problem with the joint. But here's the deal, nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, if I'm dealing with pain here, it's actually not a knee-itis, it's a tight muscle itis because I guarantee your quads are a lot stiffer, your hamstrings are a lot stiffer than you think. And when my quads are really stiff, what happens is this, your quad gets really tight 
it pulls on the tendons around my knee and then it creates all this tension on my knee where my knee just doesn't have any room to move. And so all of a sudden it starts to grate and grind and you start to feel pain there. So just by releasing pain in and around your knee or releasing tension in and around your knee, for example, formal in your quads, natural state of our healthy tissue should feel pressure but no pain. So you got muscle knots in there, get them out of there. That's gonna go a long way to eliminating pain. It's actually gonna show you, oh, I'm actually, nothing's wrong with my knee. It's actually just my quads. Now on the off chance that you do all that stuff and you're still dealing with knee pain, absolutely get checked out by a doctor or physical therapist. It's always good to check, but it doesn't let us off the hook of doing all the self-care stuff that we know we need to do. Oh, that was a hard little uphill right there. Now you may notice that runners who have more diverse physical backgrounds, they've done different types of sports, they've been active the longer part of their life, they tend to get less injured. And there's a real key reason why the people who haven't done anything for a long time and they just start running is because these people, they have a little bit more baked in good movement patterns. They know how to move their body well. And if you can learn how to move your body better, you can actually run better too. But I can't run better without learning how to move my body. So the next step you really need to take is watch this video playing over my shoulder. It is knee strengthening exercises for runners. I take one of my good friends and fellow coach Elizabeth through some knee exercises, specifically how to squat in a way that really lights up your hamstrings and your glutes, gets your hips moving first, takes all that pressure away from your knees. Go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna finish uh, running here. Woo, let's get a little sweaty. You guys keep enjoying things. You keep running your miles. I'm gonna keep filming, enjoying the sunshine. I'll see you in the next video. Do's, do's, do's. What am I answering? Doozing.